I qualified for the 2008 Olympic team in Beijing. About two to three weeks after the Olympic trials were over, I got a phone call telling me that one of my drug tests came back positive. I had to withdraw myself from the Olympic team and leave our training camp. I didn't get to go to Beijing. Um, I was a favorite to win a couple medals and I didn't even get to try. To fully appreciate where world record holder Jessica Hardy is as we approach the London Games, you have to first understand where she's been. After you were drug tested and when one out of three of your tests came back positive, what was your first response to that? I thought it was a mistake because I was also very confident that I had not consumed anything intentionally. I've known her for quite a long time, since 2004. She's been a very accomplished athlete that uh, I knew without a doubt that she hadn't done anything wrong. Hardy tested positive for a banned substance, clenbuterol, and voluntarily resigned from the team. Jessica not only was shocked by what had happened, but also what people were saying about her. The Olympics have come and gone, and everyone was calling me a cheater and a doper and all this, and, and I had no explanation, even to myself, what had caused my positive test. And, you know, I knew that I hadn't taken anything intentionally, but when you're going through seven months of people calling you a cheat and missing the Olympics, um, you know, I just kind of, I even lost my sense of reality. And I must say that if I was in the same situation that you were in leading to Beijing, I'm not sure if I would have handled it nearly as strong as you handled it. You know, I, I just kind of toughed it out. It wasn't healthy because I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. I was depressed, um, you know, completely isolated from my lifestyle of traveling and training all the time and my friends that I saw on a regular basis. And it was the diff most difficult time in my entire life. She was grieving, so she was vacillating from, from, you know, from depression to anger to acceptance, to denial. She was just all over the place. You know your athletes well enough to know that they weren't trying to do something uh, to cheat the system. My biggest concern was for her and uh, her, her state of mind. Just trying to help her process those things and try to bring her back to the reality of, of everything and that life is, life is basically good and that they, this isn't going to be symbolic of her, who she is as a person or of her life in general. After you had tested positive, you took some time and then went off to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. What was going on there? I wanted to get away from the Olympic Games on TV everywhere. The Olympics were on every TV, which was great for Olympic supporting, and, and I'm really glad that we get that opportunity. But at the time, I was like, you know, couldn't get away from it. So it was good for me to get outside of the country and be with my family, the people who were really there for me. She was scared. She was terrified. She was so devastated. We all were. It was, it was not a good time. The news trucks were on the bridges around our house and we literally had to leave the house to, um, to hide from the media. They were, they were all surrounding the house, like 50 at a time. It was incredible. The road going from nowhere to hide back to reality is not an easy one. And while what happened in Beijing devastated her, it would not define Jessica Hardy, nor stop her from regaining her dream and her place in the world. I just knew that I still had a lot to prove to myself, and I was so ready to do well in Beijing that you know, I just kind of had this hunger that never went away. No matter how much, how much, how long they kept me suspended, I still, still really was ready to go. My mom's a, a psychotherapist, and every single day was there with me, just kind of keeping my head on straight. And my coach was perfect in handling it with me. Not keeping me in the water three times a week during my suspension was you know, enough to keep me involved in the sport and still loving it and engaged. I think uh, the first time she got up and uh, raised a 50 breaststroke as a time trial at the uh, national championship, she broke the world record. And I think that was the first moment in time that I thought, she's back. I think she's been rebounded remarkably. I think she's great. Um, she's able to, like she, I, I've overheard her say that she, her identity used to be tied up as a swimmer and now she's more Jessica. Yeah. And it's kind of fun to see that she has a life outside of swimming, but, but yet is truly loves the sport. That life-altering transformation has put Jessica in a good place. A place where she's not only appreciative, but excited to be back competing again. She's looking forward to London, no matter what happens. 
now that I get to compete again, it's, I'm so grateful to be able to race every time I step up on the blocks, and I'm so excited. You go to London, you compete in the games. Do you have to win a medal to be considered successful for yourself? Or is just going to the Olympics <laughs> and competing going to be enough? I don't think I have to do anything to be successful. I'm already successful. I'm happy 100% with everything I've accomplished. You know, winning an Olympic gold medal is, uh, I can't even imagine how amazing it would be. So hopefully one gold medal, maybe multiple. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. I'm just hoping. This episode of In Focus was brought to you by DeVry University. Proud to support the education of Team USA.